third time's a charm. So oh, sorry. We were having a little technical difficulty getting our live started. So let's start over again. I'm Rhonda Draculis, RK3 Designs, and we are live. Do me a favor, leave me a comment if you can hear me and the audio is okay. So come to find out, there's this little tab on the uh, live switch that's kind of important and it says uh, go public. Well, we had ours on private, so I was talking to myself hate when that happens. All right, <laughs> so here we go again. Tonight, we're going to do a really fun uh, finish where we're gonna use four different mica powders. Hey Two. guys. Yes, all right. Yay, I'm here, y'all are here, thank you. Um, so we're gonna use two of the darker metallic mica powders. We're gonna use a pearl mica, and we're gonna add a little bit of rain tree, or rainforest mica. Gonna get out of the turquoises, so I'll give y'all something a little different than turquoise. And then we're gonna add a little bit of the brown opaque dye. So what I've done to this point is I've mixed up the mica powder, um, and I like to mix my mica powder with the dispersion fluid that is now available. Can anybody wanna scoot this up? Uh, the dispersion fluid is now available on our website. It comes in thin and thick formula. I haven't played with the thick very much. Uh, the thin I like, it, it, it really does make those mica powders just melt like butter when you mix them with your epoxy, but it also gives some really cool effects. Um, so we're gonna see that tonight. That's one of the main reasons I'm doing this. So I've put uh, mica powder in my cup and then I put one capful and I've made kind of a slurry. So. You can see it's kind of a slurry, just like I used to do the slurries with the alcohol, but now we're using the fluid. All right, so I've got dark bronze metallic, and I'm just using tonight regular stone coat countertop epoxy. We're gonna have coffee metallic powder, or mica powder, I guess you'd call it. Uh, I've already mixed up my pearl. I've already mixed up my rainforest. I'm going to do a little bit of the opaque dye. And then I'm going to keep some clear in the cup. All right, so I want Kenny to show you this. Look how creamy and nice that that mica powder stirs up and mixes when you add that dispersion. So when you do that, you're not going to get those little um, fishtail looking starburst that you can get if you don't mix up your mica powders uh, all the way. So very easy to mix. Just like I said, I did a cup, uh, about a, um, what did I say, a cap full? <laughs> a duh. Duh. So I'm a little rattled y'all because I was, couldn't figure out why we couldn't go live. I was got my feelings hurt because it said we were live and nobody was watching. Nobody wanted to watch you. Uh, I know, nobody wanted to see me. So, all right, so this is the Alumalite opaque dye, and I'm going to do it pretty opaque. Now, one thing I like about this dye, it's one of my very, very, very favorite browns, is you can actually make it transparent, but I'm going to get it really chocolatey or espresso-y, I guess, if that's even a word. All right, so we got our four or five colors, dark bronze, coffee, pearl mica, and the rainforest green, and the, um, the opaque dye. All right, so I had somebody ask me the other day, yesterday maybe, was the pearl, the, the stone coat countertop pearl, really golden or really um, kind of pinky. I would definitely say it's not in the pink zone. It's more in a gold zone. So Kenny, why don't you, I don't know, I don't know how well this lighting is going to really let you see the pearl. Yeah. But it's, it's not a pink, a pink pearl. Okay. It's more of a, like a golden creamy pearl. Perfect. It's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful color. Okay. So everybody say hi to my awesome uh, moderators tonight. Erica with Artist Till Death, Clara with Clara Lawrence Art, 
and Vamp is out there too, I hope. Um, so she's an amazing artist as well. So Vamp, put your contact information as well. All right, guys, so here's what we're going to do. I have prepped. And what the hell? What about the camera guy? Oh, the camera guy. That's bull. Yes. Loaning. So the most important thing yeah, about. Yeah, the most important person that <laughs> walks this earth is me. Wow, that was a lot. Okay, so does that make you happy, baby, thinking that? That is right. Okay, well, he, then that's, that it is. Did y'all hear it? Y'all hear it from the horse's mouth. He's the most important thing that walks this earth. All right, so let's get past that. Wow. All we're going to do. You didn't even say <laughs> give it up for Kenny. That's. Give it up for Kenny, okay? Wow. How about that? All right, so what we're going to do. Oh, by the way, did we tell you this is the Rhonda and Kenny comedy hour? All right, so what we're going to do here, we're just going to come in, we're going to lay this out now if you don't want a really dark background let's say you don't you want it to be a and it'll it'll make a difference even though this the mica powder is opaque so it's not blurry on my end it might be some it might be your internet service because we're we've got ours hooked up here too and we're watching it and it doesn't seem to be blurry on our end so should i show them no <laughs> I'm watching it on my phone, just to make sure. All right, so now I'm laying down the dark bronze. But what I was saying is, if you wanted to do a different background, if you did a light color background, it's gonna change it up just a little bit. Um, not a whole lot, but it will lighten it up just a hair. All right, so I'm gonna come in now with the opaque brown. So I've done two metallics, now I've got an opaque dye. And again, if you don't want this to be as dark, you don't have to put this dark opaque. I'm gonna leave, and I'm leaving a little bit of these colors in my cup for later on. All right, I think I'm gonna scoot this over just a little bit because I can't reach it. All right. So tell me what kind of weather you guys are having. We're actually getting um, a cold front to come in tonight. So for Texas, um, you know, it's going to be, what, the low 50s? That's freezing for me. Freezing. Freezing. All right, so I'm going to take, and I'm just going to spread everything out onto the surface. You could use a trial. You could use a brush. I like to use my hands. What I don't want to do is over mix so that I have no separation in my colors. I want there to be separation in these colors. That's what's going to give us the really cool effect. So whatever you do, don't over mix. Now this would be a great finish if you did a modified rock edge. Modified meaning you don't give it quite a rock look, you give it more of a bark if you're actually going for a wood grain. So you're saying like maybe a slate. Maybe a slate, saying. yeah. Um, or you could keep it a smooth edged. And what I would do if I kept it a smooth edge, kind of like what I have here, is I would go in first before I started spraying, I mean, pouring my epoxy, I would actually go in and hit my edges with some spray paint and give some undertones. Maybe I would hit it with some copper spray paint, uh, maybe a little bit of hammered look. I can't, Kenny's pointing to me. I can't see the front. All right, so I really like that. Kenny, if you want to do a flyover. I just did. Oh, did you? Okay, but I can so do you again. could see how you, you can still see the separation of the color. And because there's dispersion mixed in with the micas, it's going to cause some really neat effects.
All right. So without doing anything, if I don't touch this, this could be a finish all on its own. But, but we're going to go to the next step. So actually, and that's true, you could walk away right here. And this would be such a cool look because it's going to continue to move. And the dispersion and the mica powders are going to kind of start fighting and cause some really neat, um, I guess, look. This is not going to be a wood grain, is it? No, I mean, you're, you could do a wood grain exactly like this. Um, I'm not sure I'd use all the metallics like I'm using. I'd probably use some more opaque colors. Come in here and um, maybe even tint it four or five different color browns maybe. But this is more um, kind of a slate. But you're gonna, you could do a wood grain exactly the same way. All right, so I really like that. Now let's start adding. Actually, you know what? I'm going to show you what it's going to look like if we don't add any other colors. Let's just add a little bit. We're going to layer. We're going to do a lot, a lot of layering on this piece. And the more we layer, the more it's really going to kind of change the whole look. So first of all, I'm going to come over with some copper mica powder mixed with 91% isopropyl alcohol. And I also have some coffee. All right. So I'm going to make sure it's coming out good. And I don't want to set my, sh my uh, spray nozzle to be super fine, all right? And actually, I'm going to do a few drops on it to get me some bigger uh, kind of visuals. And then I'm going to come in and very high, I'm going to kind of spray it. That was with the copper. And now I'm going to come in. The old Italian drip. The old Italian drip here. And then this is the coffee. Now you don't want to go crazy. It looks like I'm spraying a lot, but I'm literally barely squeezing the trigger. All right, so I'm going to kind of let that set up just a little bit. Let that alcohol start this, this um, evaporating. Now we're going to come in, and you can do this with a stick. You could do this with your hand. Whatever, Bondo spreader. I'm just going to come in and I'm going to start dragging. Now I'm not going down straight up and down. I'm just kind of touching the top. And I'm kind of taking that mica powder that's on the top and I'm kind of pushing it in. Sorry guys, my hair is just. They can't see you. They can't see me? Okay. <laughs> I'm focused on the piece. On the piece. That's the most important. All right. You'll notice I'm not really digging in. I'm not taking my stick and going down and making very, very fine lines. A Bondo spreader would work as well. You would get a little bit wider uh, marks. but this is really pretty. And you can see how that alcohol, where I sprayed it, how it's just making reactions in the piece. Oh yeah, that's way cool. Make sure your alcohol has evaporated before you go in there with the torch. All right. Again, we're just building and building and building upon this finish. All right. I really like that. Okay. So now I'm going to come in and I'm going to add a little bit of, I'm going to lighten up the piece a little bit and I'm going to come in with a little bit of the pearl mica. And I'm just going to kind of, oh, I just busted a hole in my cup. <laughs> yep, I busted my cup. 
All right, we're going to save that. And then we're going to come in with a little bit of the rainforest green. I think I'm going to be a little more specific with that. And I'm just kind of drizzle that over here. There. <laughs> all right. What are we laughing at? They want to know how you come up with all these techniques. Um, I, Collaboration? Uh, well, I mean, a lot of it are, are people will send me inspirations and want to know how to do stuff. So a lot of it is... A lot is, of playtime. Yeah, a lot of playtime. A lot of it is trial and error because, uh, like this piece here, I actually saw, minus the green, a lady sent me an email and was wanting to know how she could ach achieve this certain look. And I kind of played around with it, and I sent it back to her, and it was what she wanted. But I kind of wanted a little bit of color. So, I don't know, 15 minutes before, <laughs> before we went live, I said, I'm going to throw some green in there. And uh, because I always throw turquoise. All right, so I'm going to take my hand. Now, did y'all see how I just took that stick, and I just melded it. Again, I'm going back and forth. And you can see how by dragging that stick in, just the mica powder with the dispersion is causing such cool reactions. Okay, now you can also take your finger and your hand. If you don't want it to be quite so striated, you want it to be a little muter, you can take your hand. Muter? Muted, muted -er. Muter, huh? Muter. So hey, like this fader. is my show. I make up my own language as I go. How about that? Okay. That is a Rhonda word. Muter. So muter. Just yeah. a little muter and we'll get it there. <laughs> you better quit being ugly. Oh, muter. All right, so we're going to heat it up. What do y'all think about so, that? What do y'all think about that old muter? Just wait till this camera's off. All right, so that's pretty. I like that. Um, I, I actually like it, like it not quite so muted. <laughs> I like to have striations, you know, because that's just me. Because to me, the, the mica powders really wake up when you drag that stick through there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to, I'm going to add some black. All right, because I want to add a little depth to this. Oh, gosh, this black is... Whoa! Hey, make sure you always check it. That's a good fun fact. <laughs> check your nozzles. Uh, all right, so let me find one. Of course, it's on that over there. I'm going to grab me another can of black. All right, so tomorrow, by tomorrow afternoon, I should have the replacement caps on the website. So we do have the caps in. Um, I order them like a thousand at a time. So um, I will be selling them in packs of five for $2.50. So give me, give me tomorrow. Uh, I'll have them on the website by then. Uh, but they fit all the Rust-Oleum cans uh, that have like this kind of tip or let's see. Well, not that one. Uh, any of your Rust-Oleum cans are going to fit, except the ones with the, the funny handles. It's a handles. female top, isn't it? It's a feet. They're called. They're the female flat back, flat head, flat fat babe. I don't know what they're called. They're on my website. Um, but they don't work with the metallics, and they don't work with the hammered paints. So, uh, and I've looked high and low, and I've ordered every kind of cap you can imagine. And it's been the wrong cap. So, these are the ones that fit. Fat cap. Fat cap, that's it. That must have been Erica. Yeah. Was that Erica? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to come in here with a little bit of black. Not a whole lot. And we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to continue to drag and, oh, I love that black in there. 
that's really pretty. Look at that. That black just adds a sense of depth to it, especially next to that green. Oh yeah, that's pretty. So I'm actually, my favorite, I kind of like maybe if we didn't put the pearl and just put the green. I don't know, the black's looking okay through the pearl. It looks kind of cool, adding some depth to it. What do y'all think? Would y'all have put the, the pearl in there or not? I think it, it lightened it up quite a bit. The black did not lighten it up. No, I said the pearl. I asked them if they would have put the pearl in there. All right. Okay, cool. Now, as metallics. Erica said put halo. Hey, <laughs> I don't have any halo mixed up. I should have. That would have been really pretty. Kenny's favorite is halo. So you it guys, the guys, for you, those of you that don't know Erica with Artist Till Death, y'all need to go check out her website. She has got, I don't know, over 700 and something colors on her site. Uh, they are absolutely gorgeous colors. I love using them. Um, Still working on getting quite a few of her colors onto our site. But until then, go to her site, use RK3 promo code, and you'll get a discount. All right, so I'm really loving this. This is really pretty. Now, if you could come back in also, let's say you're doing this on a piece uh, and you have the ability to tilt. It's not, you know, like a pour in place. You can even come in here and tilt this a little bit and get a little bit of an organic type of a look. I don't want it to move a lot. I just want it to move just a little bit. Now, what I was going to say about the mica powders. As soon as you mix up mica powders into your epoxy, immediately, the minute you quit stirring, those mica particles are going to start to kind of sink. So if you pour them out on your, your uh, surface and you just walk off, we say you spread them out and you just walk off, what's happening is those, those chunks of mica powder particles are starting to fall. So what you want to do is wait, I don't know, 30 minutes or so, come back and re-agitate it. Do exactly what I just did. Run your stick through it. All, and what that's going to do, it's going to reactivate those mica powders. They're going to come alive, and you'll get a beautiful finish. If you wait even longer, say an hour, your epoxy now is kind of like, uh, like honey. Those particles are now, when you go in there and you agitate them, they're going to stay suspended. They're not going to want to fall as fast. And then because your epoxy is starting to cure, as you, whatever you move through here, it's going to actually want to stay better than this right here. Because if I don't touch this anymore and I come back I'll in an it hour, in it's going to be very, very soft. It's going to be beautiful, but it's not going to be very distinct lines. If I want them to hold those lines, I'm going to wait about an hour and I'm going to redrag my stick through there. And then those patterns are going to want to stay because it's starting to cure. All right. So okay. hold on a yes. second. So if you're gonna router your kitchen laminate tops and not take them off, you can router them with a quarter inch round over. And then when you get to the ends by the wall, you can get your sander and finish off right towards the wall. You can router all that off. And then I would just hit the bottom with the sander as best you can. That way you try that epoxy that will go underneath. Yeah, kind of. We try to round off our top and our bottom so that we don't develop a, a ridge or surface tension and that epoxy can't roll. That's why we take off that 90 degree angle. So if you can see here, this top is, is, is been rounded over, so the epoxy is able to roll. Also on the bottom, it's been rounded over, so you'll notice the drips don't build up right on the edge. They'll they, go underneath there. They go underneath here. Yeah, and that's what you want. Yeah. Hopefully that'll help you. All right, good question. That was a great question. Um, okay, 
So let's, let's do, you know what, I'm going to just fog it very, very lightly. Just one end of it, we'll only do one end. The other end we'll leave it. So I'm going to come in and kind of fog. And then I'm going to come over with the copper. And I'm going to hit it. Whoever mixed this copper up made it super, super, super thick. All right, let's re-drag it and see what happens. We're continuing to build layers. By adding a little bit more of that alcohol. We're building. Let's see what happens if we add some clear. Oh yeah, now we're starting to get some really pretty fractures. Look at the fracture marks now on there. So we're going to leave this like that. Okay, we're going to see what happens. Let's leave it. Oh, you're fixing to get the mic in there. Um, let's leave this and let's do something on this end. What do y'all want to do on this end, guys? Because this is going to have to kind of sit by itself because this is really pretty. What if we run, let's run some of the the opaque, the dark opaque dye. Let's run through, let's run some of that through here. I tell you what I'm going to do. Where's that black spray paint? Here we go. I'm going to add some more black spray paint. And then I'm going to drizzle this black opaque dye through here again. Now it's starting to thicken up because it's been sitting. So I mix this up. Oh. 10 minutes before 7. Yeah, about 10 till 7 or so. All right, so let's rerun them through here. Now look how what happens when you start adding that opaque dye in here. Just gives it, and if you put it over the top of that spray paint. And that's pretty. There. I like that. Do y'all give me some hints? What do y'all what do y'all want me to do? Somebody said put some teal in it. Oh my gosh, really? <laughs> Let's Earlier. see. Let's see, I'm gonna add actually, I have quite a bit of the green left. I'm gonna add some more green to it. Now this green has the um, dispersion in it, so it's going to kind of react a little bit. Oh yeah, that's pretty. Yeah, look at that, how it, oh yeah, I like that. We all think about that. You like that? Let's see what's happening over here. So we've got quite a bit of that mica powder still on top. I think I'm going to hit it with a little bit more. So that's pretty. All right. I think I'm going to go. Do we ahead. still have spots open in the pro class? Um. We, okay, so we ha I had a lady call me today, and she had a death in the family. So we had two spots open. Uh, actually, we have three. We have, we have actually three. So you could, someone could come with a guest, and then someone can come uh, as an individual. So, yes, we do. Now, um, I, you know, I, it's first one that pays, wins the spot. So... If you are interested, I'll have to add you manually to the class because I've closed the books on the computer. So if you're interested, let me know ASAP. Email me at rk3designs at gmail.com and um, I will send you an invoice. So, but let me know if you're interested. 
uh, because like I said, I, I've sent out an invoice, but it hasn't been paid yet. And first one that pays wins. So I hate to be like that, but we've got quite a few people that are wanting to get into this. So I had a couple of emails. I haven't even looked at them yet. So uh, anyway, and we actually had, I think two spots open up in the December class as well. So um, check that, the 101 class in December. And we've already got people signing up for the 2022 classes. And I do have a promo code. Um, I sent an email out, so sign up for our email newsletter and receive the promo codes for the classes in 2022. Um, okay, so do we have any questions? Anything, what do we want to do now? What, what fun things can we do to this piece? So it's already starting to set up quite a bit because it's been kind of hanging out here. So I'm going to kind of tilt it a little bit more, get it to move really softly. We can come in with just some clear over here, add some fun. little designs. Now this is, doesn't have any mica powder in it at all. It's just clear. All right. So what do y'all think about this? I don't know where Kenny's going. It's a good old 73 degrees in here. Oh, is that what he was doing looking at the temperature? Yeah. yeah. So it's supposed to get cold tonight. We're supposed to get a front end. I was just so. looking at the temperature. In here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we try to keep it around 73. I like it around 75, but Leslie That's gets mad hot. at me. Yeah, Leslie gets mad at me. She says I keep it like an oven, but what can I say? All right, guys, so what do y'all think? Y'all like this? I they want to add a tree knot in there. Add a tree? Okay, we can, we can do a knot. Now, the thing with knots is a knot is not going to stay. A knot is not. Knotty knot. <laughs> It's not going to stay at this point because our epoxy is still very fluid. But let's, let's add us a knot somewhere. All right, so there's quite a few ways to add knots. I'm going to kind of restriation on this. Really, Which was it? you going to put it? This wasn't going to, I mean, I don't know, I'll put a couple of them. All right, so there's a couple ways you can do it. You can come in here with some actual mica powder, and you can make a little knot. Hold yeah. on, let me. Yeah. I'm trying to hold the dang everything. <laughs> okay, so you can put a little bit right here and kind of let it do its thing, and it'll start to kind of open up and cause kind of a, a, its own little knot. This is clear. Come in with some clear. You can even try just a clear knot. And then you just kind of go around it like you would have a tree knot do. And then build it. and go out. That's kind of a fun way to do it. Gives it a little bit more of a kind of a cool. Now I'm going to let that play a little bit before I go in and start adding some color to it. Same thing here. Bring it out, kind of let it do its thing. Okay, and then what you can also do is take a stick. I like to break it. Eh! Well, sometimes I like to break it. And then you can come in, with, since I have black in front of me, we can do black. I'm going to put a little bit of color on the stick. Mm. Yeah, jalapeno on the stick. Jalapeno on the stick, and then I'm just going to, can you show that? I'm holding. Okay, so now I'm just going to. and run it up. 
Now, like I said, it's not going to really stay because right now the epoxy is still very, very fluid. Now what you don't want to do is, and I'm going to show you here, don't put a lot of color and then do this and make it mud, okay? Because if you make it mud, then you're not going to have anything to work with once it kind of stops moving. So you want to kind of let it get a little stickier than it is right now and then you can kind of start coming in with some different colors. Now here's the the one with the the metallic. That'll continue to move. That's kind of a fun a fun one to do. You can also just kind of instead of having hard lines have the soft more muted or or muter. whatever, muter color. <laughs> so this is a lot softer. Okay, but that was just with the clear. It gave somewhat of a, a look. That kind of went away. Yeah, because our epoxy is so fluid at this point still. So maybe move this. There we go. All right, so knots are something that you want to put in your piece once your piece has really been set there for maybe an hour or so and you've really got uh, the epoxy has really kind of quit moving because you can, you can put a knot in at the very beginning and it's going to look really pretty um, and then you're going to come back in a, in a while and it's just going to be a blob. So um, definitely want to do, you know, do that after you let it sit for just a little bit. All right, so I think this is cool. I love how the colors are just really melding together. Um, so you can even change all this up and instead of going in a striation like this, I could hit it with my hand and we can go kind of move everything into a 45 and that way you're not gonna have 90 degree angles, you know, straight across the board. Um, Y'all wanna do that? Sure. Might, might be a little starting to set up a little bit, but you know what? Let's try it. And I'm going to go to the point of no return so that I have to do it. So I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to start laying these brown this way. This might be epic fail, guys, but we're going to see. See how this works. So I'm coming back in with a little bit of the bronze that I had left, the dark bronze actually. And do I have copper? I have a little copper left. Let's see. This is the fun part when we just start being dumb <laughs> and start adding stuff. All right, let's see how it goes. Uh, I'm going to torch it just a little bit. Here it goes. So see how by moving it, how we're waking up all that mica powder? And I tell you what, actually guys, I'm gonna go get something really quick. Let me go get a bondo spreader. Hold on just a second. There's one over here. I got on one. That table. All right, so that was with my hand. Let's take a Bondo spreader. I love working with a Bondo spreader because I like that skip trial look. I'm barely putting any weight at all on that, the Bondo spreader and I'm not really hitting one area more than once and every time I hit it, I'm just about going a different direction. All right, that is really pretty. I like that. I'm gonna hit it with a little bit. Of, let me do, 
Isn't that pretty? Now this, I can walk away from right now, not touch it again, and it would be a finish. All on its own. All on its own. So I'm going to tilt this a little bit. It's getting set up quite a bit, so tilting it's not going to do a whole lot. Oh, wait, leave it like that for a second. Yeah. That looks cool. Isn't that pretty? All right, so I'm going to hit it with a little bit of copper. I mean, no, this is coffee. <laughs> There, that looks kind of cool. All right, oh yeah, look at this. Isn't that pretty since it tilted? Look at that, that movement there. I think what I'm gonna do is come in with some lines. The old Italian drip. Yeah, I'm gonna come in with some lines of, of alcohol now. Mm-hmm. Look at that, isn't that pretty? By putting that alcohol on a stick, you can manipulate it a little bit more, kind of get just where you want it. I'm gonna show you the big old drops. Kind of go over that just a little bit with that, see if you go, look at what happens when you go over where I sprayed the alcohol. Look how when you hit it with a little bit of the... Yeah, you can see that. It, it causes a really neat... Do it right there. Yep. A neat look. Yeah, that is, that's cool. I don't know if the camera's really showing you the depth of this thing, but man, it's pretty. I love this right here. a little copper. Here's a little copper. Y'all should be able to see that a little bit better. This is copper metallic that's in the, the alcohol. I'm putting it on a stick. Yeah. Oh yeah, that is, ooh-wee, I like this. It almost looks like a big old divot in there. Yeah, looks like it's very textured. I'm going to have to recreate this, which means I'm going to have to go back and watch this live and <laughs> see how I did it. All right. With the stick. With the stick. And you metered it. And I metered it. <laughs> metered it. I metered it. So I'm going to come in over here. I'm going to do this again. I'm going to come in with some copper. See how I'm just putting it a little bit? Oh, wow. Okay, that is super duper cool. Yep, I like it. Let's let it do its thing a little bit, see what happens. What do y'all think about that? Like with anything else, we got to kind of let it do its thing a little bit before we make all these harsh decisions. What do y'all think about this? This is, I think this, I love, I love this right here. I think that looks way sweet. So anything else y'all want to do to this piece right here? Ooh, this is so pretty. Y'all like that? I have a little bit more of the opaque dye. It said walk away, Rhonda. I can't. Y'all, I just can't. This is just so much fun. And so to answer whoever's question, how do I come up with these? Like this. Doing this. <laughs> Literally doing this. All right, here's some gold, y'all. Let's see what gold's going to look like. I'm going to run a little bit of gold in here. 
That gold do through the... do... Gold through the green. Let's see what the gold through the green looks like. Clear on your left side. Clear on my left side. That, that's the one. That's your left right there. I, I know that's my left. I didn't know I had clear left, but we do. No, All isopropyl right. alcohol. What? Clear? Oh, clear isopropyl alcohol? Yeah, IPA. Oh, sorry. I thought you meant clear. I have clear. Let's do that too. I have clear. Don't mm. ever underestimate adding clear to your finish because that's going to even give a whole nother level, level of depth. So I'm going to come in here and add some clear. Ooh la la. Look at that. And I'm just going to drizzle this over here. Okay, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna touch that. I'm gonna let it kind of go on its own. Over here, I'm gonna and add. And I have to think about the IPA. <laughs> he was thinking beer. That's what Erica thought. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So let that. So that the clear is looks really cool. So now we're gonna do clear alcohol. Just drag it through like I did. I'm assuming just drag it through on a stick like we did with the color. That's what Keith said. Okay. Was that Keith? All right, Keith. Mm -hmm. This clears for you. This clears for you. This clear is for you. This ain't Budweiser. <laughs> Could be. All right. Woo wee. Yeah, that just kind of gave it a really cool little look, opened it up a little bit. So I'm not liking the gold with that, just didn't tickle my fancy there. Look, this is kind of cool. So I spritzed it with alcohol. So you can see the little spritz marks, okay? But then I went back and ever so often, I hit it. And because it's starting to get really thick, I can skip trial it and get some really cool effects. But ever so often you can still see what the alcohol did to the mica powders. All right. Now when you're trying to wait, for the epoxy to set up so that your mica powders kind of quit moving. On those kind of finishes, you want to be really mindful of how much heat you, you use because more heat, what's going to happen is whatever stage you've gotten to, it's going to take it backwards. It's going to make it more fluid. Uh, kind of an oxymoron, it's going to actually speed up your cure time, but for just a little bit, it's gonna kinda of take it backwards and make your epoxy more fluid. So if you have a design and I hit it with a lot of heat, it's gonna make that design very soft. Let me show you right here. All right, so see this area, it's starting to get kinda of set up. It's holding my pattern. See how it's holding that pattern? It's not really wanting to move a whole lot. But if I come in here with a, oh, the torch or even a heat gun and I start really moving it, See how I can soften that out now? And I can take all the distinction away because I'm making my epoxy much more fluid. Now you have to be really careful because if you get it too hot, you're gonna burn it. But now look at the difference but how I muted this and made it very soft compared to what's starting to set up over on the next side. Now that's a pretty look. I mean, if that's that's a look you're going for, I that's mean, you a really do it, yeah. yeah, that's a really pretty look. But you got to be really careful and not add too much heat because, like I said, you're going to make it go all the way back to it's a very fluid state. Let's do this on the striation part right here. Let's see if we can soften it down. You want to use a heat gun for that? Yeah. So they can see. Oh. Okay. I mean, how about not? I can. Use, it's faster with a torch. <laughs> Now see how this, I made it really soft compared to this. Sure. 
Okay, so that's pretty. I like that. All right, so that was fun. So you could see that just by adding what we had, four mica powders, um, four different colors, we actually, if you really look at this, there we've created so many colors within the piece because we were melding and mixing so much that there are some beautiful, it almost looks like, like there's a little bit of a purple in here. Yeah. That is so pretty. Um, all right, guys, so tell me what, what side do you like? A, which is the striation, or B, which is a little bit more of the melded look, or do you even like, you know what, I will get a, a heat gun. Let me really meld it some. We'll see what happens. We even, we'll have a part C. Oh, you're not going to use a Harbor Freight one? Oh, this is Harbor Freight, isn't it? No. Oh, sorry. Okay, so I'm going to come in here, and I'm just going to start melding it and get it to move. Now, when I meld, I'll come over the top, and as it starts to move and it starts to get those little wrinkles, that's when I start to move the gun. Now that's really pretty too because it's it's given a different look on the top. Now by doing that, once the epoxy was already starting to set up, it's going to gel back quicker and it's going to keep these uh, patterns a little better than if I were to do that is the minute that I poured it on the surface. Let's go get some of these striations. What gold did you use? Uh, just the mica, regular. yeah, the regular um, mica gold that I sell on my website, gold mica, and it's mixed with the 91% alcohol. So you can see by coming in right over the top of this, I'm just really smoothing out the finish. There, very softly. So that, that, that is pretty. But I would not do that until my piece had been set. Well, right now it's been setting an hour. exactly an hour. So I wouldn't hit it with a heat gun until you are at the stage where it's not really wanting to move anymore. Then kind of force it to move. So that way your pattern's gonna stay. Yeah, because look at this. That really did stay. It's still a little bit warm, so it's gonna move a little bit. But look, look at the pattern that it gave. Wow, that's really pretty. I like that. Cool. Okay, guys. So what'd y'all think? Did y'all like that? What would you name this kind of piece? What would you, what would you name side A? Tell me, tell me what side you like better, A or B? Do you like it before we hit it with the heat or after we hit it with the heat? And come up with a name, because I'm gonna recreate this piece right here, the striation one. I'm gonna recreate that. I really like it. So y'all help me come up with a name. That would be cool. All right, guys. I guess that's it. This was fun. All right, so announcements. Any, any big announcements? We are running a special uh, for the month of November. So if you use uh, Thanksgiving 10, you'll receive 10% off everything on our website. And we do same-day shipping if you order before noon. We uh, also will reimburse you any of the shipping if you if it gets overcharged to you we only keep keep five dollars over what it cost us to take care of pack, packing for boxes and packing material everything else we refund back to you guys um 2022 schedule is posted and uh, there is coupon promo codes if you'll sign up for our newsletter there's a promo code for each one of the classes with a different amount off each class what are you doing, Kenny? Well, I didn't want this to fall. Hold on. Kenny, Time out. Kenny's making me look sideways. 
So, um, and besides that, guys, I We're guess that's the... it. Um, All right, there you go. Voila. Are y'all drunk it... yet? All right, so I guess that's it. Um, any questions that I don't uh, get to answer live, I will, or that Erica and Clara and Vamp haven't answered, I will watch tonight, and I'll try to answer them all I can. Guys, I appreciate y'all joining us. Sorry we had a little confusion this morning. It's one of them things. This morning? Or this... I'm tired. Can y'all tell? <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm super tired. So, uh, this afternoon. Sorry we had some issues. All right, guys. Um, I guess until next week, um, y'all have a blessed rest of your week. Have a great weekend. And um, let me know if y'all need anything. Email me, and I'll do my best to help you guys out. All right? We love you, and... We thank you so much for all the support that you show Kenny and I every single day. So, Appreciate all it. right, guys, until next week, remember, don't be scared, move forward, and be created. Love y'all. See ya. Bye. Adios. <laughs>